Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Hobart and William Smith Q&A um, with um, myself, Allison Bolin. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions here um, at the colleges. Kelly, it's so great to see your face and anyone's face who jumps on. Don't be shy. John and I keep this very light when we talk. Hi, David. And you know, you could put some name down and I could say hi to you and it might not even be your name. <laughs> um, but I would like to introduce to you um, our Dean of Admissions, John Young, who's gonna go through the night and kind of just give you guys an overview and allow you to ask some questions. Um, and I'll be kind of moderating the chat. And so if you do have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat, um, but I will kick it over to John. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, Allison, thanks for, for putting putting this together. And it's nice to see some, some people uh, whose names are familiar to me. The fun part, I'm skipping way ahead. Uh, students, um, finish high school, uh, go to college, graduate uh, and become an admissions officer. Uh, parents, if you wanna make a career shift, uh, become an admissions officer. It's a it's a fantastic job. You get to, um, well, looking forward to this fall, travel again and uh, visit people in in their settings. And uh, now, uh, where things are are happening on campus, we're actually able to welcome students to our campus. So that's an exciting thing. Uh, if you haven't had a chance already please take a look at our admitted student page. Uh, we've got some great, uh, not only these virtual events going on throughout the month uh, or the rest of March and, and all of April, but we also have the opportunity to, to visit campus. And we've really got uh, a couple different ways you can do that. One uh, is sort of an enhanced visit where you can take a, a campus tour, uh, meet with a member of our staff. If there's something you're interested in seeing on campus, talking to a faculty member or somebody else uh, on our campus, we can certainly arrange that. Uh, we're also about to announce uh, three admitted student days on our campus where we can have up to 75 people uh, visit campus for an event. Uh, we're gonna hold, hold those on Fridays in April uh, on the, correct me if, if I get this wrong, uh, Allison, the 9th, the 23rd, and the 30th uh, are the big uh, three days. Um, that's the rumor. That's the rumor. That's the plan. Um, we uh, will be trying to keep everybody spaced apart and socially distant and safe, uh, yet at the same time, get you a chance to walk around and, and see the place uh, for yourself. So we're excited. Uh, this is a sign as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we're now, I think, over 80% of our faculty have been vaccinated here in Geneva, New York. So we're, we're making our way slowly but surely. And uh, we just found out the announcement from the governor today that everybody over the age of 30 uh, can now get vaccinated. So we'll, we'll, we're moving along slowly but surely. We anticipate that all of our students will be able to be vaccinated before they leave uh, from, from the campus uh, in May, unlike some other states. Um, I heard the governor of New Hampshire said they weren't going to vaccinate out of state students, but New York will. So uh, we're excited and, and things are moving along. Um, all right, well, I've got uh, just a quick presentation to share with you all. I don't wanna take up a ton of uh, time that way. I really would rather spend time to talk about the things that are important to all of you. Uh, but I, I did uh, actually, here, let me share my screen first before I do that. Um, all right. All right, hopefully everybody can see this. Um, uh, you're gonna he hear this a million times uh, at HWS. Uh, you're thinking about your future, so are we, uh, because that's how we've, we've really focused our energies as an institution. Our mission statement is preparing students to lead lives of consequence. And I think that's all very future focused. Uh, you can see campus. Um, our, our office is right there on the shores of Seneca Lake. So if you get a chance to visit, uh, you'll get to see it all, uh, all in person. But I think if, if I were in your shoes, uh, students, parents, one of the things I'd really be struggling with is how do I differentiate Hobart and William Smith from all the different places uh, we've looked at and visited? And especially if you're thinking about small liberal arts colleges in the global scheme, I think we have a whole lot more in common than we have different. But I think we each deliver education a little bit differently. And, and there are a couple of things I want you to know uh, about where we focus our energies. So first, academically, I think we have a very future focused curriculum and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. Um, mentorship is a key part of success at the colleges. And we have these great uh, centers across our campus that I think really help our students uh, to develop their resume and develop skills in different areas. And I'll talk about each of them in, in a little bit. 
All right, so let me start with the curriculum. Um, when we say a future focused liberal arts and science curriculum, I think what we really mean by that is we've got the traditional um, majors and minors that you'd expect a college like us uh, to have, English, history, biology, political science, chemistry, um, psychology, uh, all very popular at the colleges. But we also have some, some majors uh, and minors that, that I think are a little bit different than some of our liberal arts college peers. Uh, entrepreneurial studies is a perfect example of that. It is our most popular minor on campus by a mile because it matches with so many different majors in a bunch of different ways. And it's really helping students to, to understand the leadership to understand uh, how to problem solve in, in different ways. And there's a, a great curriculum paired with this uh, that, that really helps students uh, delve into, um, into entrepreneurial leadership. Uh, it's a seven course program and starts with entrepreneurial uh, leadership, which is Entrepreneurial Studies 101, that really looks at the leadership qualities of successful entrepreneurs. And it discusses everything from, from product innovation to service implementation, risk and return, uh, scale and scope. We see that for a lot of our students who are coming up with ideas. How do I scale this? Uh, what's the scope of it? Uh, moves on to Entrepreneurial Studies 120, which is more of an economics course, uh, giving people a foundational understanding of microeconomic theory. Uh, students could also take an economics, introductory economics course to replace that if they so choose. Uh, one of my favorite classes on campus, though, is, is Entrepreneurial Studies 201, which is called Quantitative Tools. And it's really teaching the basics of accounting, statistical uh, management, Excel skills, really necessary for success. I think everybody should take that course. It's really useful. Um, there's also a capstone class, a uh, 400 level entrepreneurial studies class where you really look at a real life problem or challenge in the social, global or um, local economic environment and how might you go about solving it. You've got the learning side, the far left half of that slide, but then the doing slide. Here are the things that come that go with the academic experience, the co-curricular programs, the extracurricular programs. Uh, we just had our pitch competition on campus uh, a week and a half ago, and one of our sophomores uh, won uh, the pitch, and it's really our version of Shark Tank, where we have a group of students who propose business ideas, and they select a group of finalists to give an eight-minute pitch uh, for a panel of judges and uh, the winner selected uh, this year, Matt Newsom, uh, one of our sophomores, won the pitch. Uh, he had a really neat idea to help introduce uh, composting recycling in elementary schools by designing a, a, a plate that has three different colored sections on it so that when the students are done with their meals, they put their the different recyclables or different things on the different portions of their plate. They match up uh, to the waste paper baskets that they put all the stuff in. It's a great idea, easily implemented in, in Geneva, New York. They've already partnered with the school district here. So the neat part about this is you've got this great academic experience that's partnered with things that you do outside. And that's what we mean by future focused. And that happens in, in all of our majors uh, and minors. All right, um, mentorship, obviously the people who are gonna help you do this, it's a critical piece of the puzzle for us and our faculty was recently ranked ninth in the nation uh, in terms of student satisfaction and, and engagement. Uh, they work very closely with our students all the way through their four years. The best example I have of the mentorship we provide is the system we use to put you in your first semester courses uh, your first year. Um, like a lot of schools, this is different than when I went to college students, we didn't have computers the way we do now. And, and it was a nightmare to register for courses. It was not a pleasant experience as a student. Now we have computers and, and at most schools now, what you'd simply do is go into the computer and choose your top 10 courses from the 450 that are offered and some computer algorithm would then spit out your course schedule and, and off you go. And we did it that way for a while, but we found uh, we were making about 350 course changes over orientation, which is not ideal for an entering class of 550 to 570 students. So we changed it up and about 10 years ago, we switched to a different model. So now you still go into the computer system and list all the courses that you have preference in, but that list goes to your first year dean. And then we go and meet with your first year dean in admissions and turn over your admissions file to him or her and tell that person everything we've gotten to know about you through meeting you for interviews and high school visits and college fairs, through reading your application and looking at your essay and reading your recommendations and looking at your transcript. And you fill out some survey information that allows that dean to get to know you pretty well. And then that dean will put you in your first two of the four courses you'll take in your fall of your first year. The first course they're gonna put you in is your first year seminar. 
and the professor who become who teaches that first year seminar will become your academic advisor. So you have a dean and you have an academic advisor at the colleges, and then the, your dean's going to put you in a second course. Then you'll meet with your academic advisor, and the two of you will discuss what will be your next two courses. So your four course schedule will really be put together by hand, not by a computer system, all through conversations and meetings that happen. Uh, rather than just a, a computer algorithm. So instead of 350 course changes, last year we made less than 20 uh, for the first year class. Students were getting the courses that they want. It was working really well. And you've got two people who know you pretty well before classes even start. And, and that's just one example of, of the mentorship we provide, but I think it's really important. You can see the curriculum here. We have a, a, a foundational program called Explore, Collaborate, Act. Explore wants you to go out and investigate all the majors and minors that we have. Uh, collaborate means you're working with your faculty members to really talk about your future. And then Act is, is dedicating your, yourself to that uh, subject, doing an independent study, a study abroad program, something that really uh, carries things further. All of our students have to have both a major and a minor uh, before they graduate or a double major. So you're going to have at least two areas of concentration uh, before you leave us. All right, I talked about these centers uh, that are important and we've got a bunch of them across our campus. You can see them listed here on the slide. We have a bunch more. I just chose a, a, a couple of these, um, but I think they all do a terrific job really helping students dive a little bit deeper into their academic experience or co-curricular experience and, and building some things that are gonna be uh, additions to your resume. So um, the Centennial Center for Leadership has a leadership certificate program uh, that if you choose to participate in it, that gets stamped on your transcript when you graduate. You can you have have, will have designed a leadership program uh, on our campus. The Finger Lakes Institute studies the science of, of the Finger Lakes. Uh, there's uh, amazing opportunities for students to do research uh, there. The Guerin Center for the Arts, we have a, a, a great building on our campus that houses theater, music, and dance, a uh, neat opportunity. The Center for Teaching and Learning, it's where you go when you want to get better at something. It's in our on our library second floor. Uh, any students with a learning difference, any student who wants to get a paper reviewed, any student who, who needs help in a specific academic discipline, we have study mentors uh, in all of those subjects. So it's a, it's a terrific format. Uh, but the one I really wanted to focus in on is the Salisbury Center uh, for Career Professional and Experiential Education. It's our Career Services Center. And what I love about our place is you start in your first year. You don't wait until you're a senior to start thinking about what your life is going to be like after you graduate. And we have a four-year program called Pathways. And if you choose to participate in that program, we guarantee you an internship or a research experience. And we guarantee you a stipend for that internship or research if it's unpaid. We found we had way too many students get that great internship working out in Los Angeles for 20th Century Fox, but they couldn't afford to give up their summer job back home to have that on their resume. Well, that's too important to have on your resume. Let's get you a stipend so you can afford to, to go do that. The program works really well. The first year is more about assessment. Uh, getting to know you better, you move into exploration experience. I think this all works uh, for us. It's a tried and true program. We've now had over 60 different colleges come and, and model their career development program uh, after ours. So I think we meet with great success this way. You can see all the different places our students have done uh, research or, or internships recently. Uh, now that I've lived in upstate New York for um, well, a little bit over 30 years, you'd figure I'd become a Buffalo Bills fan. We can see them there down almost in the, in the middle towards the right. I've not quite gotten there yet, but I'll, I'll get there. I will become a Buffalo Bills fan and, and, and cheer them on. Um, one of our graduates is the head of their community relations program, and he always takes on uh, our students to be, to be interns. So it's a, a great example of, of how we work at the colleges. All right, um, I've yacked enough, but you can see my contact information here. Please copy that down if there's uh, any questions that, that pop up after tonight's session. I'd be happy to, to answer them. Uh, just shoot me an email or, or give me a shout. We're in, the, we're in the office every day, so we can connect you with all the people who, who might be helpful to you. Um, but Allison, if I bring some questions put in the chat, are there some things I can talk about at, at this point before we get going? No questions so far. Um, and if anyone wants to unmute and ask a question, please feel free. Um, one thing I can kind of add to what John has talked about tonight is John and I are pretty well versed, um, not only in the college process from the admission standpoint, but as parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a, a college sophomore right now. John has a, a college freshman. Um, I have a high school senior. John has a high school junior. And then I'm going to follow up with my freshman daughter. 
let's all pray for us that we may get through with her. Um, but uh, if you have questions, we, we totally understand, um, <laughs> understand that. The visit days for April are April 9th, 16th, 23rd, 23rd and 30th. Yes, and there'll be a virtual uh, admitted student day on the 17th. 17th. And uh, so have your kids or you, whoever's managing the email, <laughs> look for it, pay attention because we're, we're trying not to flood email to, to you all, but also that's where it's, you're gonna see it first. Um, so just kind of keep an eye out for an announcement with that coming out. Yes, we just um, put the schedule together for those three programs and just got approval uh, from the county uh, to actually hold them. So we're excited. Yeah. Uh, it'll be so, sort of our first events on our campus. It, it's, we're really excited to have people on campus. And I will tell you, I was in the office today and it was bumping. We were busy. Yeah. We did have a walk-in or two, I think. And it was <laughs> just a really busy day. It was great to see students. John, if, could you talk a little bit about um, how we've handled COVID with sure. what's going on with students in class? Are they hybrid? Are they virtual? How did that work for us? Yeah, that's um, we've been open all along. Um, we, we did send students home last March, but uh, we've been open uh, this fall and this spring semester. Uh, roughly 70% of our classes have been in person or in hybrid uh, form. And then we've had about 30% of our classes uh, online. That's really been due more to, I think, our faculty and some underlying health conditions that they've been working with, but we anticipate that we'll be 100% uh, in person uh, this fall where we're preparing for everything to, to be back uh, in the way that, that we're used to seeing in the colleges. Um, I, I think for our students, they've managed exceptionally well. It's been obviously, as you all know, in the high school setting, it's been hard in the college setting. It's been a challenge uh, as well. And in particular, I think it's been a challenge for our first year students uh, because it's, it's hard to just make those friends and socialize when you don't have that opportunity to join all the clubs and the activities, play the sports, do the things that you're used to doing uh, to get to know people. And, and so that's one of the things I think we're most excited about. We've already talked about one of our big traditions at the colleges is, is what we call an activity fair. And it happens uh, the first week of classes where our hundred clubs and activities all set up tables out on the quad and students just bounce from table to table to table. They sign up for way too many things, which is okay. Uh, it's a good thing you get involved and get invited to a bunch of club meetings and sports and all the different stuff that, that can happen. And we've done that virtually since, but I don't think it's the same uh, as when you can go walk around and actually see people. So we're excited. Not only are the first years going to be invited to that, but we'll let the sophomores come to that uh, as well so that they can get to know uh, some more opportunities that exist for them. Um, I would love to say we've been COVID free and not had any cases on our campus. We most certainly have just, just like others, but I think we put in terrific protocols and safety measures to, to keep people safe and, and try to manage any big events. So nothing happened on our campus where we had to shut down shop uh, or, or cancel classes or, or anything like that. So uh, knock on wood, um, I think as, as we come into the spring, things are, are looking up that way, but people are still really maintaining those safety measures on our campus and I think that's uh, that's what we need to do for the time being. Great. Um, got lots more questions. Um, can you talk a little bit about the college athlete and the experience at HWS? Yeah, I'll jump in and then Allison, please feel free to round this out. I think um, it, typically uh, it's somewhere between 30 and 32 percent of our students are varsity athletes at the colleges. About 85 percent of our students were varsity athletes in high school. Uh, so we certainly have a lot of students who come to HWS uh, with some athletic background and, and what will that mean for them. I think the varsity athletes, we are going to be competing for league and sometimes national championships in just about every sport. So it's a pretty high level of competition, uh, even though we're at the division three level in all of our sports, except for men's lacrosse, which is division one. Uh, we compete in the Liberty League with most of our peer small liberal arts colleges in upstate New York. So uh, we have fun rivalries with St. Lawrence and Ithaca and Union and Skidmore, uh, Vassar College. Depending on the sport, we'll just not like some school this weekend and then we'll not like a different school next weekend. And that's the fun part. Uh, what I think our students enjoy is that a lot of times they've played against people who are playing for these other schools or uh, they know somebody who attended uh, who attend one of the other places. So we can get a little rivalry going, which which makes life uh, makes life a lot of fun. Uh, our spring sports are, are happening now, so that's a, an exciting thing. Um, and, and they'll be going, uh, I'm sure, back to normal uh, in the fall. Um, uh, so I think it's, it's a commitment for those students. I think they have to be prepared 
uh, to work hard. Um, I'd love to say, hey, yeah, it's easy. Just play a sport and be a college student at the same time. I think uh, that takes some, some planning and they've got to be committed to things academically. There's no doubt about it. They have to communicate exceptionally well. Uh, with their faculty members uh, so they can stay on top of things. And then for students who aren't playing at the varsity level, we've got a great club sport system where students uh, can be competing against other colleges, but you don't have practice every day. The commitment's certainly not the same. And then intramural sports for us is a huge community building experience where you can go down to the field house and play intramural volleyball or five on five basketball or ping pong, you name it. Uh, you get a t-shirt if you win the intramural championship. That is a badge of honor on our campus. So you have to be prepared uh, to, to make that commitment to win your intramural sport. It's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, being a college athlete is, is pretty special. Um, and I, I certainly do think that um, we do a good job with supporting our athletes, but you are a student first um, at Hobart Lane Smith. And I think um, the majority of our athletes come in are extremely high level students um, and they are well supported. I do think it's really nice to come in um, kind of having a group of friends that you already know, you've connected with them, but but that happens too with all students now with social media. Um, <laughs> and depending on if you're a Hobart, you know, athlete or a William Smith, um, especially William Smith, I can't speak enough about their peak performance program mm -hmm. and some of the, the options for them to just better themselves from start to finish within leadership, um, connections above and beyond um, college, just that alumni connection. Um, and, and they do a lot of really great stuff with that, bringing in you know, sports psychologists and, and sleep therapists, nutritionists. Um, I think they do a really nice job with our athletes. So I think um, some of the resources that are there are a little at a higher level. So yeah. that's really nice. That's a great point. Uh, but I, I do think it's important for, for um, students to be prepared. You're going to have to work hard. No doubt about it. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about living on campus and what the requirements are that we have? Yes, uh, we are a four year residential liberal arts college. So we expect students to be in campus housing for all four years uh, with us. One of the reasons I think that works well is the variety of housing that we have uh, at HWS. We have your traditional residence halls, which you'd expect uh, a college like us to have. Uh, we have two uh, main residence halls where the first year class resides, Cheryl Hall and Jackson Potter Reese, otherwise known as Super dorm um, and and between those two they're right next door to each other uh, you've got a huge proportion of the first year class uh, in those two residence halls but then we also have first years mixed in some other residence halls on our campus so I think it depends more for students on, on do they want to live with their classmates or do they want more of that big brother big sister uh, down the hall uh, experience we house in the first year based on your first year seminar so once you choose your first year seminar and your advisor, you're going to be um, housed uh, nearby the other students in your first year seminar, probably not your roommate, but there'll be some on your same floor upstairs, downstairs. Uh, the idea being by creating a, a living community, it's going to be easier for you to get together to study for exams, to prepare for papers and things like that. You just gather in the lounge in the residence hall uh, and you start talking through things uh, each night. Uh, so that can really help. After your first year, uh, some students will continue to live in residence spaces. We also have a great set of theme houses on our campus. Uh, they're all along the lake all really around the edges of campus, all these small, small houses where there could be anywhere from five to 12 people uh, who live together. Some of them have their own kitchens, some do not. So you could be on the meal plan or do one of the co-op uh, plans. You're a little more independent, but you're still right on campus uh, and it's easy to get to class. And um, our house, the admissions building that you see here um, on either side of us are student is student housing. And uh, they wake up in the morning, can have their cup of coffee on the back porch. It's a pretty nice view uh, of the lake. And then we also have uh, a set of uh, townhouses on campus. Uh, the Odell's apartments are great options. Again, your own kitchen and own space, uh, but you're still right on campus, easy walk. Uh, easy walk to class. Great. Yes. Study abroad. Yes. Tell me a little bit about when you study abroad, is it through Hobart and William Smith specifically? Do we have partner schools? What does that look like? Sure. Um, so about 60, this year, 65% uh, of our students will traditionally have an, an abroad experience. We offer over 50 programs to 35 different countries. Uh, so I think if you come to HWS, expect to be asked about studying abroad. It's certainly a part of who we are as an, as an institution. 
what I think sets our programs apart and always gives us those really high rankings in, in Princeton Review and, and all the different magazines and guides is that most of them are led by our faculty members. So we don't just put you on a plane uh, and send you to Australia for the semester. Uh, Professor Brown from the biology department leads that trip. And you'll probably take one or two courses from your faculty member who's leading the trip and one or two courses at whatever university is home base. And then you'll do a research project or an internship, something that gets you out in the community wherever it is that, that you're studying. And, and my only advice to students is, is to think really, um, and this is alliterative, think broadly about study abroad. Um, at least when I was your age, I thought study abroad was foreign language thing. You love French or Spanish or German, you go to France or Spain or Germany and you live with the family and you come home fluent six months later. We have those trips, you can do exactly that. But we also have trips uh, to, um, you name it, South Africa, to New Zealand, to Vietnam, to China, to India, um, we have summer programs to the Middle East. Um, I think the opportunities are so broad. In addition to the traditional semester long study abroad programs, we also have short term study abroad programs uh, in between the semesters in January and in the month of May. Uh, and that works really well, especially for some student athletes whose, whose seasons might cross uh, semesters. But boy, I could go on that study abroad program in May uh, that, that Dave Mapstone leads to Ireland or Stacey Yada leads to the Middle East or Professor Topkowski leads across uh, Eastern Europe. Or I can go on the one in between semesters um, that Professor Hatch leads to Bali uh, or you name it. Uh, there's some amazing, amazing opportunities for our students that way. And, and uh, I have always been willing to be their tour guide. Nobody has taken me up on the offer as of yet, but I'm ready. Other things. I think that's it. There's no other questions. Um, just know that we're here. We're happy to connect you with anyone, you know, that you need on campus. Um, one of the things that I, I enjoy is when I get a call from even a parent and they say, I just need help. What do you need help with? Yep. I need you to connect Johnny with someone on campus so he can just see what it's like to be a student there. Cause I know during COVID it's been really hard for families to show their, their, their kids. What, what is this going to be like for me as a student there? Um, so if we can help at all, um, please let us know. Yes, yes, freshmen can have a car on campus. Um, they don't need a car, but they certainly can have a car. Yeah, we estimate that about a third uh, of our students have a car on campus, but we do have a campus shuttle, uh, which is really easy uh, for those of you who haven't been to campus. I think the most popular um, shuttle stop is Wegmans, our supermarket, which is right behind uh, campus. So you take the shuttle, pick up your groceries, uh, whatever snacks you want, uh, and take the shuttle right on back uh, to campus. But it just runs a loop uh, through the campus and, and into town to a couple different stops uh, and, and back to campus, which makes it pretty easy for our students. All right, well, Allison, okay. you put the link to the admitted student page. I think that's home base for a lot of people because yeah. that will tell you all the different events as we add them. They'll just uh, keep piling in there. We've got a bunch of virtual things, but we also have the in-person and on-campus events. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for, for all of that. And uh, sometimes people just need to be connected with a faculty member or with a student. So as Allison said, just pick up the phone, give us a shout. Uh, we're happy to make those connections if, if we can do it. But we thank you all for your time. Congratulations uh, to, to students and to parents because you've helped navigate this whole thing uh, too. This hasn't been easy on anyone, uh, no, no <laughs> doubt about it. So uh, congratulations. Uh, and, and let us know if we could be helpful on our end.